What's up guys? Good afternoon. Crazy stuff today. Woke up, checked out Twitter, and realized that there was a Nintendo Direct out of the blue. As a person who follows Papa Gino's pretty closely, and I also watch block content? Blocked? Block content. Yeah, block content. I watch those guys pretty regularly as well, and I heard that there might have been a Direct dropping this week. A lot of people who tend to not want to follow leaks felt like that probably wasn't going to be the case. And with the news of Sakurai delaying the release of Fighter Pass 2's first DLC character, many were skeptical to a character actually being announced or a direct even coming out. But yet I heard that there is a direct that is going to be coming out you know, regardless of all the news with COVID pushing things back or making it even hard to sell hard copies of games, making more people have to buy things digitally, of course, for their own safety, right? Regardless of this fact, I heard that it's worth checking this direct out. They say it's a mini direct, yet it's almost 30 minutes. To me, that's basically a normal direct, but okay, Nintendo. We'll check out the mini direct together and see what they have here on March 26, 2020. It's a Thursday, a very surprising Thursday at that. We have some games right here from, uh, which don't have any ratings, um, to mature. So here we go. Let's start it off and see what Nintendo has for us today. All right, COVID, yep. So release dates are subject to change. That makes perfect sense. We've expected this for sure. And it's good that they said our, their hearts are going out to all those that are affected. All right. No time wasted, dude. Just going straight into it over here. Hmm. What do we have? Long ago. Xenoblade. Two great titans beat the game already. Existence. But really excited to see what the they're going to show here. And the Maconis. Get the Bionis and the Makonis. Beautiful game. If you didn't play it, do it. It looks so much better now. And as a person who's played the previous game, I felt like it was such an ambitious endeavor to want to play uh, to release that on the Wii. Yep, definitive edition. Now a lot of people have been asking me if I will be playing this, and I feel like this. Oh, this looks so beautiful. So. I've beaten the game, and I want to see if they're going to release more content for me to warrant wanting to hop into the universe again. Oh, it looks so good. And I still like the voice acting, too. It was as if I could see into the future. I know you won't believe this, but Shulk can see the future. This is like the model from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Sharla! It's not me. It's the power of the Monado. And so it begins. Ah, oh, the blaze of grass. Of the wow. I've been waiting for you, Monado. If you really never played this game, the story is amazing. It isn't set. Al Alvis? So Melia? Fiora? And that's exactly what I intend to do. Fiora, Fiona? I always forget. Whatever. The people of Bionis will never let you triumph. Fiora. Ah, okay, so release date. It's subject to change, we heard, but alright, May 29th. Ah, unrequited love. <laughs> Manifested in human form. Wait, what's this? What is that? Boy, there's more? Is there more content? Chill. If the capital is on the shoulder, there are people there. I thought you'd want to go. Uh. Wait, Shulk and Melia? Are they trying to ship this? Bruh! The ultimate version of a modern classic. Please explain. Chronicles Definitive Edition. Okay, okay. On Nintendo Switch, 
The game looks better and plays smoother than ever before. Of course. That joint had frame drops. It looked... The battle HUD uh. and menu screens are easy to read and easy to use. It was a little hard for me to understand before. I will agree. I needed Aussie to actually and teach me how to... music has been re-recorded. Aussie La Vista. fully immersed in the majesty of this vast world. It already had a great soundtrack. And a new epilogue. A new story. Future Connected will cap off the main game. So if you've played and loved the original game, you can not only revisit it, but look forward to one more adventure with Shulk. I'm playing. Alright, they got me. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Chronicles definitive this is all I wanted. And it, you can pre-purchase the game starting today. Crazy. Also, coming on May 29th, the Xenoblade Chronicles definitive works set will pack in a 250-page art book. Goodness. I mean, future connected, that's what I wanted to hear. Hi, Goodness. Everyone, and welcome to Nintendo Direct. Uh, wow. News on upcoming Nintendo Switch games. I wonder if you could play Future Connected coming out this year. Without having to play the first some headlines, shall we? The, the first title. Like Three of 2K's most beloved The game is pretty long. Soon to the 2K? Is this f sports related? Sports is canceled. But there's a heart. What's the heart for? Oh, 2K. Uh, and, all right. Uh, all right. So I think we just saw Bioshock. Yeah, people did talk about Bioshock being a, a potentially released on the Switch. That was talked about. That was leaked, and a lot of people were like, "Why would they do that on the Switch?" Well, here it is. I have it already on PS4. Cool, but awesome to see that they're bringing it here. Borderlands Legendary Collection. Is that all three? What does that mean? Is that two? That's dope. So they're bringing a lot of big, big IPs, man. Bioshock series. Alongside Borderlands. XCOM. Now, I do love the Mario... Rabbit series and people told me if I like Mario Rabbids that I'll like XCOM, so that's that's a dope release. I do like the tactics kind of our tactical kind of RPGs. Hmm. That's dope. Well, shoutouts to those guys for bringing those games there. Like, those are series that a lot of people have talked about on other systems. Now, the question that I have is, will it run well on the Switch? Only time will tell. I hope they know how to optimize well. In a new trailer for the Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, the Black Order Expansion Pass. Okay. So they're still pushing more content for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Mm. I heard good things about this. I heard it's fun to play with friends. Dr. Doom, if you guys want to know why do I like Dr. Doom, he was my favorite assist in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. <laughs> That's about it. He was definitely one of the most versatile assists in that game. Other than that, though, of course, I still appreciate the Marvel fandom. And looking at this, this kind of reminds me of the fun times you have with friends playing arcade games. Hmm. Alright, Curse of the Vampire, Rise of the Phoenix, and Doom. Appreciated. What's this? Oh! Shinsekai. The weeb in me got hyped. Alright, shh. You are the last of the human race, forced by a global winter into an unexplored aquatic world. In this deep sea exploration game, you collect resources to upgrade your gear, craft items, and dive deeper into the abyss. Okay. As you explore increasingly hostile environments, you better watch those oxygen and pressure levels. And if that's not challenging enough, Shinsekai's time attack mode, another dive, boasts a perilous maze for you to race through, culminating with a final monstrous threat. You know, it can get pretty heavy down there, so why not lighten the mood with the jukebox feature? It lets you remix the game's background music by modifying audio filters. 
That's cool. The time has come to discover the truth hidden beneath the ocean's surface. When Shinsekai Into the Depths launches on Nintendo Switch today. I think the cool thing about this is that it's like a 2D platformer that allows you to swim. But a lot of people don't like thanks to this free update. Like water levels, so will this hold well? DLC for a game I've been playing like crazy. Let's hear it. What you guys got? Whether you're already living it up on the island. Or you're still planning your departure. I've been playing this There's non-stop, dude. Coming up and we're happy to spill the beans. Er, you just killed the fish! What the hell? You see, after downloading the free update we made available at launch, one zipper T Bunny will visit your island in celebration of Bunny Day in early April. What, a, who, what does he do? Can you hunt down the egg zipper head everywhere? Oh. What? Alright, zipper. You can craft these special limited time items from the egg series. That's cute. The Bunny Day event only comes once a year. This time from April 1st to April 12th. So be sure to participate. And guess what? There's another free update coming later in April. It'll usher in some newly added features, including the Earth Day event. Okay. Of course, we'll continue to bring you the latest on updates and more via Can't the wait official to see Animal Crossing Halloween. And that, other channels too. If you guys have so, already seen my soon. house, it's it's quite devious looking. We hope you enjoy the updates and everything else about your life on the deserted island. Good game. Surprised that I've been playing it a lot, but you know what? It's a good game, so why are you surprised, right? Hey, look, we'll see about so the update. Tiring. Nintendo? Oh, this is your dad's company? Oh, I thought Apparently Nintendo was straight up hiring. Range of services. The job description entails many responsibilities. You'll deliver items. Mop the floor. And maintain a comfortable work environment. My man said work simulator. With crane operation and other tough tasks. Whoa, what the f uh oh. That projector won't do. Hmm. Think you can take care of that? Whether you conduct yourself in a professional manner or opt for more creative solutions, do wow. what you need to do to get the job done. This looks like an indie game. Ready to join the team and be put to work immediately, because good job launches today. This is a Nintendo game. Nintendo made this. All right. Catherine, full body, the mature action adventure puzzler is coming to Nintendo Switch. Contemplating the next step in his relationship, commitment phobic Vincent finds himself pulled into the allure of a new love. Looks like poor Vincent's caught in a love quadrangle with Catherine, Catherine with a C, and Rin. Little does he know, temptation might lead to his own demise. I think in this cult classic, your choices will affect how the relationships unfold, and it only gets weirder. Deservedly, not only is Vincent riddled with guilt during the day, he's also not sleeping so soundly. Every night, his nightmares consist of a crumbling tower of puzzle blocks that he must climb in order to survive and see another day. Find out if love is over for our troubled bachelor in this dark, intense, and intoxicating story when Catherine full body releases on Nintendo Switch July 7th. Bruh. Atlas is out here, dog. A free update for the I, I thought we were gonna get like Persona, but this is dope. I mean we have Scramble, but that's Japan. So free ring fit update. They reminded me to get back on it. What's this? Wait, ring fit with music now? Mix things up with the new rhythm game mode. Really? If you want to set a high score, you gotta get your body moving to the beat. Speaking of, there are 17 music tracks in the rhythm game. Okay. We're talking music from Super Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Okay, that's cool to start off. Wait, what songs they have from Zelda? I only know, like, I only remember one song. <laughs> Rank fit for Smash? Ring fit for Smash. Your companion oh. Ring will now have a female voice option. Nicely done. And you'll also be able to change languages. I'd like. Feel free to That's change cool. it up in the settings whenever you want. I have so. We're also adding I'm so used to the regular voice. In both the regular and quick the guy's mode. voice. Sorry. When you're not in a battling mood, you default. Run through a variety of fields. This free update for the Ring Fit Adventure game will be available today. That's dope, yeah. That's cool, man. 
I like that, giving the options for um, for both voices. And, I, well, many voices. One treasured TRPG approaches. Okay, it's not Since Fire Emblem. Since 1990, the King's Bounty series has been influencing the evolution of Western RPGs. Okay. And now it's back with a fresh look and a new approach. This straight-up sequel will pit army against army, sending the player on a quest around the world to save the world. This time, the graphics are more realistic. That's what it looks like PS3! Okay, let's, so all right, that looks better. So master your surroundings like the master strategist you are. That's what it looked like PS3 for a second. Across the land, you'll meet new people whose ethics and affinities are informed by the new character development system. Find out just how deep the gameplay will get when King's Bounty 2 launches on Nintendo Switch in 2020. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to get that, but interesting. Next. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate News approaches. All right, let's have it. The fighter included in Wave 6 of the paid Super Smash Brothers Ultimate DLC will be... This should have already have happened. From arms. And I'm happy. Wait, this one character? Unusual thanks to those extendable arms. So we'll have to extend our development time too. Please stay tuned for just a bit longer. The next fighter will be announced and released this June. A fighter from arms, so one character from arms, coming out in June. Whoo! Don't miss this arms game trial. Twin tail would be dope, but I think a she's like a spirit. Of arms will be available exclusively to Nintendo Switch Online members. Dang! These elite fighting super they really want people to play arms again, dude. And arms. People have been so playing it, arms to but like to rejuvenate this, the scene. That, that's cool. Time, you can or the full game stimulate. Free. Yeah, yeah. Now, let's get stretchy. Look at that. I already have the game, and I had fun with it. Feeling good? Look at that. Look at that. Um, is that it? What, do they have more games? Usually they end with Smash, but Where I guess we'll check I? this out. Can't believe I survived. What's this? Oh snap, I thought it was Kingdom Hearts related. I was like, bruh. What is this? I didn't even hear what the announcer said I was talking. Fire, water, wind, earth. Nature's masters. Is this a square game? Great stone's power this is Breakly the Fall. The man. And if unleashed, would bring down death, disaster, calamity, and blight upon the land. Step into a brand new world with something. May the crystals guide you. This is the crystal's blessing. Don't swear to details, eh? And don't stand on ceremony either. If I've helped even JRPGs, one baby! Bravely default to let's go. Let's there it is. There it is, baby. I was getting the vibes. I didn't hear what the announcer said. Oh. Okay, let's get that story, baby. The saga begins when our hero Seth, a young sailor, washes up on the shores of one such kingdom. Well, at least I'm alive. Seth. Here, he meets Gloria of Musa, a mm -hmm. princess who was forced to flee her kingdom when it was destroyed by evil forces bent on stealing its crystals. Yes. You dare claim the crystals? You do not know their worth. I love the art. He also encounters two travelers determined to decipher a mysterious and magical book. Elvis and Adele. I have a certain special book to be deciphered. <laughs> We're not friends or anything. Adele. Because he hired me. As if guided by fate, our heroes join forces and set off together on a grand mission, each filled with a sense of purpose. But there will be those who I hear the music. their way. Those who have gotten hold of special items known as asterisks. These Bravely stones allow their character for smash. to take on jobs. Such as thief or black mage, yeah, yeah, exactly. Infinitely more powerful in the process. It looks so good now in comparison to like 3DS when I've seen Bravely Default. Okay, let's do this. I shall steal it all. Every last treasure in the end. Ah, this is bringing back memories. In battle, you must decide when to use Brave Point. Of course. The lifeblood of the game's turn-based system 
The key to victory lies in knowing when to use the Brave and Default commands. Choose Brave to spend BP in order to allow characters to perform additional actions. Choose Default to order a character to guard, reclaiming a BP in the process. Strategically hold back or take multiple actions in one turn. To make the yep, right yep. Choice, you must consider your it's so risky though, because sometimes if you brave a bunch of times, right, then oof, you could potentially get hit, but you get a bunch of turns. That's pretty dope. Mid battle? I don't remember doing that mid battle. Yeah, they have a lot, a lot of cool cutscenes now. Yeah. The demo version of the game will launch today. Nice. And in the near future, we'll conduct a survey to gather feedback and incorporate what we can as we finalize the game. We hope you'll participate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Square Enix's beloved series, Bravely Default 2, Finally. will release this year. Ah. <sighs> Now this makes me want to complete the handheld version of Bravely Default that I was playing. Let's keep this good news train a moving. Goodness. Wait, that's not it? From the world Ooh, I'm not the Switch. biggest D&D fan, but I could... It's just because I never... I played it once digitally, and I bombed. It was like me, Kotaro, Sylvanas. We were so terrible. But yeah, what's this? Oh, this is not D and D. This is different. Every single game included in this massive new collection of fun from around the world. Switch should be doing this. I like this. This one. Hanafuda, Backgammon, Renegade, Checkers, Checkers, Present, Dominoes. I never played Present. Heron Hounds. What's chess? Jack. Nice. Four in a row. Oh. Chess. Connect four. Hello. Ludo. Richie Mahjong. Sevens. Couldn't have get the, gotten the IPs, I guess. Texas Hold'em, Nine Men's Morris, Air Hockey, War, Kara, Chinese Checkers, Yacht Dice, Takoyaki, Billiards, Hex, Spider Solitaire, Goma, Bruh. Matching, Bowling, Shooting Gallery, Slot Cards. Now you don't even need a deck of cards. You could just have a Switch. You could play all of the games. Fishing? Do they know me? Toy Curling, Toy Boxing. Toy baseball, <laughs> team tanks, this is nuts. Puzzle, and six ball Could you play this online? That really is 51 games. Please online. And there are many ways to play them. Some games are multiplayer, including options for up to four people, playing via local wireless, and in some cases, online play is supported too. Okay, some cases. Choose three games, match up with other players, and just play. Play to your heart's content against rivals the world over. The best games better not be bodied. Games, 51 worldwide classics, launches on Nintendo Switch. When this drops, you know how many random ass games you could play on stream? Oh my god. Huh? I'm telling Eminem, dude. <laughs> Alright, what's this? So you're the ultimate ninja, are you? Well then, prove it in battle. As one of eight players, BR most points to claim victory. An eight-player BR. Across stages. And show off your gum ninjutsu like only you can. Interesting. The characters don't move too quick, but they're big environments. Can you catch each other? You can dash at high speeds. Can you? Okay, okay. Disguise yourself. And wield an arsenal of skills. And speaking of arsenals, from heavy hitting hammers to fast and flashy katanas. To tactical tricked out yo yos. Your choice of equipment could mean the difference between domination and defeat. Ninjas thrive in clans, so cement your supremacy in four on four team battles that oh. prove ninjas are most clever when they work together. Oh, I thought this was your efforts end in gummy eight player free for all BR. I like this better now. When Ninjala sneaks up on Nintendo Switch May 27. So the cool thing about Ninjala. The, the fact that a oh, free to play cool the fact that their teams it's kind of cool Luke Skywalker's Jedi Academy to learn the ways of the force that we Customize people can't camp look, anyway in this Star Wars story and battle online with up to 16 players 
Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy launches on Nintendo Switch today. Huh? And get ready to strap in because Star Wars Episode One Racer is coming soon. In this remade Dragon oh, the racer is dope. Panzer Dragoon. Blue Dragon through incredible landscapes. Blue Dragon. Battling giant creatures and lethal battleships. Using 360 degree controls and lock on targeting. It's your destiny to reach the tower or die trying. When Panzer Dragoon Remake launches first on Nintendo Switch as a timed console exclusive today. What? I've never played that game. And it gives me Star Fox vibes. Coming to Nintendo Switch. One more? All right, big surprise. Trials of Mana, never played it. Damn, they're hyping this trailer up too. This has to be a good ass game. Oh, there's more, okay, it's a bunch of videos. The Trials of Mana, Fuser, they're gonna just show a bunch of videos back to back. Other Scrolls Blades, never heard of it, but we'll look at it right here. Is that first person? Yes, it's first person. Okay, next, Warhammer 4000, 40,000 rather. Mm. Okay, next. I mean, I'm not a hater, but next. Shooter, Vigor, from Bohemia Interactive. Okay. Cool, next. Burnout. Burnout? Okay, that's fucking cool. I miss Burnout, dude. I miss Burnout. The crashes, yes, the crashes, baby. Saints Row, I never played a Saints Row in my life. But I'm... I heard their hype. What? Trails of Cold Steel actually coming to Switch? Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Oh yeah, well, I did see that pack, so I forgot. Mr. Driller Drillin. Never played a Mr. Driller, but yeah. For the Trail series, that's kind of dope. Oh, death. Imagine if Mr. Driller made it on Smash Minecraft Dungeons. Xbox Studios, that's interesting. Give me some more Xbox games. Can I get some Banjo? Well, it's been Decent fun. Direct. Today's Nintendo Direct Mini isn't over yet. What? This is our last news of the day. Now for the latest of course. on the Pokemon Sword Expansion Pass and Pokemon Shield Expansion Pass. With an expansion pass, the world of the Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield games will grow. Graphics update! Sprawling Island in the Sea, the Isle of Armor, Oops. and the frozen snowscape known as the Crown Tundra will be accessible in the Gala region. It's a new adventure to embark on. Oh, who that? New people to meet along the way. Today we have some follow-up information about part one. The Isle of Armor. Okay. On the Isle of Armor lies a dojo for Pokemon battles, where trainers gather to master their skills. And if you train at this dojo, you will receive the legendary Pokemon, Cub Fu, from the Master, Mustard. Through your training with Cub Fu, you will receive permission to challenge the Towers of Two Fists on the Isle of Armor. In this challenge, you will enter one of two towers, the Tower of Darkness, or the Tower of Waters. You may only choose one, and you and Cub Fu must face this challenge alone. Once you've conquered one of the towers, Cub Fu will evolve into Urshifu. If you choose cool. the Tower of Darkness, it will learn Single Strike Style. Mm. But if you choose the Tower of Waters, it will learn Rapid Strike Style. Dark or Water. Rapid Strike would be what I'd pick, for sure. Yours alone. Beyond that, the evolved form of Darker your partner water. Pokemon, be it Rillaboom, Cinderace, or Inteleon, will gain a Gigantamax form as a reward for your adventure on the Isle of Armor. So, let's take a look at each Pokemon's Gigantamax It's a Cinteleon. Sniper! Beating a giant drum and controlling its roots, it's G-Max Drosoloth. Kicking a giant ball of fire to deliver a powerful shot, it's G-Max Fireball. Ooh. And blasting the opponent with water from 130 feet up, it's G-Max Hydro Snipe. I like that the most. These moves are stronger than Dynamax moves. And when used, the opponent's abilities Damn. have no effect when they are attacking. Damn, they said we don't care. In addition to new outfit items Clean. and hairstyles, Clean. there will also be new lead card backgrounds of nice. and frames. Now you'll have even more customizations to use to show off your personality. Pokemon Sword Expansion Pass and Pokemon Shield Expansion Pass Part 1, The Isle of Armor, will launch by the end of June. I truly hope it's a lo lot of fun and worth the money. The expansion pass, we've prepared this early purchase bonus you can receive by August 31st. To get Leon's caps and tights. 
Starting today, during max raid battles in the wild area, you'll have a higher chance of encountering the Gigantamax forms of Caparaja and Duraludon in Pokemon Sword, and Gar Garbodor and Charizard in Pokemon Shield. I thought it was Garbodor. Battle with other trainers Wait, Garbodor and Charizard and Shield? Together. What? That's Sword stay today. winning! Direct mini. Thanks for watching. Alright. End of day. Looking back, Brave the Default 2 looked really cool. The Ninja VR game looked dope. With all those games that you could play. Tabletop. Oh yeah, Catherine, our Atlas came through. The 2K games were also super awesome. I like that announcement. Xenoblade, having extra content beyond the normal beyond just the definitive edition of the like the you know just like replaying the game over again with like better graphics and sound etc having an epilogue is all i needed to hear that alone like it's funny because i know with persona 5 royale with it coming out people said that there's like 30 plus more minutes uh, uh hours 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 of content so i'm on the fence of hopping into that too but um, this is with Xenoblade Chronicles actually having more content. I'm excited, but I just want to be able to re revisit that Smash Bros. related reveal one more time, and then we're gonna move forward. Let's see if I can just track that down. There we go. Okay, right here. So Smash Brothers related information right after King's Bounty. One more time. Let's do it together, eh? Super Smash Brothers okay. Ultimate News. I'm gonna approaches. stay quiet and I'm gonna listen. The fighter included in Wave 6 of the paid Super Smash Bros. Ultimate DLC will be... Joining the battle from ARMS. This music needed this to be in the game. It's a bit unusual thanks to those extendable ARMS, so we'll have to extend our development time too. Please stay tuned for just a bit longer. Now, with Nintendo... You know, looking back at the DLC characters that they introduced, right? We had, we've had Joker, strong, strong opening. The world went crazy. Number two, we went with, they went with, uh, if I am not mistaken, Hero. And Hero was a character that got a lot of mixed reviews because of the fact that it's more, Dragon Quest is just more popular in Japan. Then Nintendo immediately catered to the people in NA and the, uh, you know, just the people that aren't too fond of, you know, maybe Dragon Quest, but are bigger fans of Banjo. They're like, all right, here, guys, here is Banjo for the rare fans out there. And that was also super awesome, right? Banjo, I know Hero got a lot of people excited. Banjo got a lot of people excited. Terry. For sure, there are people that are in, like, South America, right? You know, not even just South America. I mean, Mexico is actually part of North America. When you just think of the countries where people played King of Fighters more, like, they they were definitely excited to see some SNK loving. And I, myself, from the United States of America, when I grew up, I always, after playing Capcom versus SNK EO on the GameCube, I loved the SNK characters way more than the Capcom characters. I saw Iori and that crazy laugh he had putting his hands to his forehead and just laughing at the top of his lungs like some deranged anime antagonist, right? When I saw that, I was like, damn, this th these characters are so dope. I saw Hibiki, just the drawings of the characters, and the, they all had some, they, they all had like a really cool personality that I didn't really get to. I felt like, that. of course, the Street Fighter characters had their own personality too, but I really liked what was displayed by the characters coming from SNK. And to see that we got an SNK character in the form of Terry Bogart was super duper awesome. Then, after those four characters where I was just like, you know, I can appreciate all of these because I played Dragon Quest. I played Persona 5 prior to get the Joker announcement. I played Dragon Quest Eleven on PS4 prior to the Dragon Quest character uh, hero announcement. And of course, I played Banjo-Kazooie and Tui. Never played the other Banjo Kazooie games prior to the Banjo uh, Banjo announcement. Then, of course, King of Fighters, Capcom vs. SNK, and every other game where Terry has appeared. Like I've enjoyed Terry's inclusion in other games. You know, Burning Knuckle was just one of my favorite moves 
and anytime I've ever seen any other fighting game, X copy that and put it on their character, I would always still stay faithful to Terry and call it Burning Knuckle. Then Byleth comes in, he gets announced. It was a very lukewarm announcement for me, almost similar to the announcement of Incineroar alongside Terry, I mean not Terry, um, Ken. Apologies, Ken. So when Ken and Incineroar got announced, I was like, okay, Ken, probably more hyped for Ken than Incineroar. Not a Incineroar hater or anything. He just, I, I'm the type that usually picks water starters. So when I saw Greninja get announced, because they made Greninja look like Mewtwo, I was like, eh, you kind of cop, you, you know, you kind of bodied me there. And Greninja, you know, wasn't even really a thing. So like they kind of announced him before Sakurai had anything really to, any source material to work with. But going back to, uh, to the conversation of, like, Byleth getting introduced, I really love Fire Emblem. I streamed it for, like, six, six months. Yet, when they decided to add Byleth, I was so confused because I, you know, I, I, I really thought we were going to get something fresh outside of Fire Emblem. Then they included him. So, you know, um, that happened. And going, uh, you know, from the words of my good friend, Keith the Human... If if we're going to get Byleth, it's only going to get worse from here. Now, you might be thinking with that preface that I provided, that this means that I am actually unhappy with the inclusion of an ARMS character. Not true. I'm actually quite happy that they want to include an ARMS character. It's just surprising that at this juncture, we're getting an ARMS character. I feel like... The inclusion of a Byleth, the inclusion of an of a character from ARMS, it could have been something that we could have gotten in the first Fighter Pass. Now, now that I've gotten that off my chest, who am I excited to see from ARMS? Looking at these characters right here, Springman, right? Springman is a character who has that shockwave. He's a well-balanced fighter. We all know that about him. If he were to be included, all he would have is that shockwave. That would allow him to like deflect attacks. And I don't really see that as something too interesting to include. Ribbon Girl on the other hand, right? Ribbon Girl just has like the ability to jump um, pretty high. Yeah, that's pretty unique about her. She has like multiple jumps. Um, not too sure if they want to include her as well. Uh, and now looking at uh, the third character, I know that he did a... He was able to just, like, disappear. Um, he was a, actually a pretty nimble character as well. Um, let me see. Um, and then the fourth character, of course, he was able to just, like, armor attacks. Now, I, I remembered having the dragon arm with the fifth character. She is quite interesting. Honest to goodness, I would be happy if we had... Three characters, maybe four. I will tell you guys which one. So the fork, actually, now that you think of it, the characters, let me use my mouse. So the characters that I would be pretty hype, I love her to death. She was super duper dope. I loved her. I loved her mech. I thought she was a really cool character. But out of all of the characters, Twintel, having the opportunity to be able to slow down characters would be dope. And we would have another female rep. So more girls need to be represented in the Fighters Pass. And because of that, I would probably slash everybody except at least five characters. So these girls right here. I also really liked Helix. I think, I think Helix was also dope. So if they were to include him, that would be cool. Kid Cobra, I loved Kid Cobra. Kid Cobra was basically my favorite character in the game. So if they had him, I would be hyped. But, I mean, his ability was just to zip around. Bite and Bark was so cool, too. Maybe Bite and Bark, it would be like a second puppeteer kind of character. There's so many different things you can think of, right? Looking at all the characters that they have in arms, so... Arms does have a lot of interesting characters, and they're all unique in a variety of ways. And for them to pick only one character, I truly hope that they go for Twintel. Knowing that Twintel, like, that would be some cool representation. You know, I know February is already gone, but I think 
looking at some of the characters we have in Smash, I would like to have Twintel in there. I mean, the character, she looks really good. And she has some pretty dope abilities. I know some people may not like having a character that has witch time, but I'll tell you this much. Like, the character, it, it, it would be cool if at least Twintel got some more popular. And if not Twintel, hmm, I'm trying to think. Like, all the, all the other abilities that some of the characters have. They have some, uh, other, some of the other characters have dope abilities, too. But I, for one, would love to see... Twintel make it in. So let's see what happens. I know a lot of people are probably thinking the same thing. It would be silly if actually a lot of other people picked um, Springman, knowing that he's already an assist trophy. And if anybody also wanted to pick Ribbon Girl, it would be like, wait, Ribbon Girl? Like, she definitely just has a bunch of jumps. Uh, and then Jara too, you know? Like, there's... There, 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 there are a bunch of dope characters, but at the end of the day, I might have to set my chips on these two characters right here. Mechanica made me very happy. Twintel was super dope. And I love Kid Cobra. And then the honorable mention might go to Bite, uh, Bite and Bark. Like, that was... Like, they that, that this combination was so cute that the dog would just come through. I, honestly, I feel like we might just get Bite and Bark just because. Or Helix. Which, if I'm not mistaken, they called him, what, Dr. DNA or something in Japan? But DNA Man, DNA Man was his name. And pr they probably decided not to call him DNA Man because people could make some really nasty jokes with regard to his name. Good job, localization team. We'll call him Helix. Anyway, um, that's the direct, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. I enjoyed it a lot. I think it was super cool to just see some of the... Things that Nintendo had coming down the line. The, the games were dope. Uh, it looks like the Switch is becoming quite the JRPG machine slowly. I like it. I'm a big fan of this. Kind of bringing me back to the Super Nintendo days, right? You know, when you look at back at Nintendo 64, it's like, damn, where did all those JRPGs go, man? Nintendo, like, what happened? Where's all that support? But the support now... After, you know, little by little, more and more companies started to trickle some more support towards Nintendo. We look at the Nintendo Switch, and now a bunch of companies are just throwing multi-platform releases. Like, games, game, I mean, just look at the fact that Borderlands is now finally on Nintendo Switch, alongside a game like Bioshock, right? The series of Bioshock is actually showing up. It would be crazy to see something like a Dead Space and Mass Effect, but... I do hope that these games are able to actually hold up pretty well on the Switch, just like the first party titles. That's probably the main thing that I'm hoping for. But other than that, thank you so much, guys, for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys enjoyed so much about the Direct. Was there anything that you liked? Did you like everything? Did you like absolutely nothing and thought that it was a snooze fest? That would be crazy and I wouldn't believe you. But if you really did, just give me some strong arguments so I could understand where you're coming from. And we could probably have an interesting com conversation in the comments section. In any event, I think I'm going to be getting back to streaming. If you guys want to check out my live streams, I am more of a live streamer than a YouTuber. Uh, you guys can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash xd1x. I stream almost every day, but the most consistent days are usually Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. PST. Of course, due to the fact that COVID-19 is just running rampant, right, around the whole world to the point where doctors have to call it a pandemic, we're probably going to be streaming literally every day, unless a cool com commentary opportunity comes my way. And if any of you guys out there are looking for commentators, or you can maybe recommend me to somebody, please do. Please let some people know. I would love to take part in some really cool opportunities down the line. And if there's some games out there that I could probably learn that you guys want me to learn to commentate for, please let me alone. Let, 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 well, maybe not. Maybe don't give me any opportunities because I can't even speak. Anyway, guys, I'll see you later, man. Thank you so much for spending time with me and watching this entire video. It means a lot and it could also help with growing the uh, YouTube channel as well. So we'll see you guys later.